Hi guys, Miss Caitlin here. Um, I have some kind of unfortunate news. The original creator and author of The Magic School Bus, Joanna Cole, passed away last Sunday. Um, so I thought we could kind of honor her memory by reading some Magic School Bus books. So I'll show you where they're at in the library. If you come into our circus room upstairs, you can find some of her paperback books down here in the BC basket. You can see there's a couple pulled to the front. Um, then over here in our leveled reader area, we have our level two, I think they're mostly level two, uh, Magic School Bus books pulled down to their own little basket here. The two books in the front here, Flies the Nest and Lost in the Snow, were actually written by Joanna Cole. The others are written by other authors and they're based on Joanna stories. So I thought it would be fun to FaceTime a friend and have her read to you some of the Magic School Bus books. So here, let me dial up Miss Frizzle. Hi there. Hi, Miss so Frizzle. Good to see you. How are you? Well, I'm I'm doing okay. I'm a little bummed because one of my good friends, uh, Joanna Cole, passed away last weekend. But I'm doing all right. I've got my Magic School Bus mask on here, and. I'm hanging in there. How are you? Well, I'm doing all right, Miss Frizzle. I'm so sorry to hear about your friend. She really inspired a lot of people. And I can understand why you would be upset. Grief is a tricky thing to work through. People work through their grief in different ways. Um, I thought that to help you, uh, maybe we could honor Joanna by reading one of her stories. Um, we have a bunch of Magic School Bus books here at the library, and I thought it would be very cool if Miss Frizzle herself could read a Magic School Bus book in her honor. Do you think you could do that for us? Grief is a tricky thing indeed, but I would be honored to read a Magic School Bus book for my dear friend Joanna. What do you think, Liz? Should we read a book? Oh, Liz is actually asking that we read one of Joanna's books, uh, The Magic School Bus on the Ocean Floor. Since it's hot outside and this is usually a time where people go on vacation, but right now we can't because of the virus. Um, so why not take everybody to the beach on the Magic School Bus? I think that's a wonderful idea, Miss Frizzle. I'll turn the call over to you so that you can read the story now. Thank you, Miss Caitlin. All right, so here's the book. The Magic School Bus on the Ocean Floor by Joanna Cole and illustrated by Bruce Deegan. It was the end of the day and it was hot in school. We had been working for hours on our ocean science projects. All our work made Miss Frizzle very happy, but it made us very tired and very hot. It would appear this story is being told by one of my students. Speaking of my students, let's see what my student Rachel had to say about the oceans. All the oceans of the world are really one huge ocean by Rachel. The oceans of the world are all connected. Together, they form one world ocean. Earth is a watery planet by Wanda, another one of my students. There is more water than land on Earth. Oceans cover almost three-fourths of the planet. Well, isn't that something? Let's get back to the story. We were putting the finishing touches on a display about how ocean animals swim when someone said, I wish we could go swimming. Miss Frizzle looked up. Without warning, she said, As a matter of fact, children, I've been planning a class trip to the ocean for tomorrow. Everybody cheered. Sometimes having a weird teacher isn't so bad. The next day, Everyone showed up in a bathing suit. We boarded the old school bus, and Frizzle started the engine. We were ready for a day of fun in the sun. When we finally came to the beach, we wanted to jump off the bus. But guess what? Miss Frizzle didn't stop. She kept right on going, past the lifeguard station, across the sand, and down to the water's edge. We are now in the intertidal zone, said Miss Frizzle. That is the part of the shore that is covered with water at high tide and uncovered at low tide. Out the windows, we saw tide pools, puddles of water left on shore when the tide goes out. 
We were hoping the frizz would let us out, but no such luck. She kept driving full speed ahead. I'm curious, what can I say? As the bus splashed through the waves, the lifeguard blew his whistle. Frizzy didn't stop, so he came rushing out to rescue us. Suddenly, a mysterious wave rose up. Miss Frizzle opened the door of the bus, and the lifeguard was swept inside. Outside the windows, we saw nothing but rushing water. We screamed and closed our eyes. When we finally opened our eyes, everything was quiet. We were under the ocean, and there had been a few small changes. The bus had turned into a submarine, and everyone was wearing a diving suit. We should have known. We were on another one of Miss Frizzle's crazy class trips. Right away, Miss Frizzle started talking about the ocean. We are now passing over the continental shelf, she said. That's the area that stretches from the shore to where the water is 400 to 600 feet deep. Miss Frizzle decided this was a good moment for us to get out of the bus. Thank goodness we had our air tanks. All around us were fish, fish, and more fish. Many kinds of fish swim in large groups called schools, said Miss Frizzle. Down below on the muddy bottom, lobsters were catching crabs. Starfish used their arms to pry open clamshells, and jellyfish floated past, catching small fish with their stringing tentacles. The ocean was teeming with life. Look at all these amazing ocean animals. How many ocean animals can you name? Oh, very good. Let's see what else we can discover. Miss Frizzle said there was life in the water we couldn't even see. She pulled out a microscope and made us look at the seawater. Under the microscope, we saw strange creatures. Girls and boys, said Miss Frizzle. These tiny living things are called plankton. Can you make a microscope with your hands? Put them together like this and look through it with your eyes. Adjust it so you can see. Oh, I see you. Hello. Microscopes are great for things that you can't see with your eyes. We tried to listen for things, but we felt nervous. We noticed some dark shapes coming closer and closer. Oh no, what is it? Oh no, the shapes were tiger sharks. Ms. Frizzle told us not to worry. She said most sharks will not eat people. The number of people killed by sharks every year is very, very small, said Ms. Frizzle. We panicked anyway. Hmm. Then an enormous whale shark slid by. Whale sharks never hurt people. They eat nothing but plankton, said Miss Frizzle. The giant shark swam down and we went along. We were leaving the continental shelf, following a steep cliff called the Continental Slope. We were on our way to the deep ocean floor. After a while, the whale shark swam away, but the frizz kept going down. The water was bitter cold and pitch dark. Sunlight could not shine down so deep. Miss Frizzle switched on her flashlight. As we swam onto the bus, we noticed that it changed again. This time, it was a submersible, a vehicle made for exploring the deep ocean floor. Pressure down here would crush an ordinary submarine, Frizzy explained, and she drove all the way down to the bottom. There is not enough food here for large animals, Ms. Frizzle told us. Most deep sea fish are tiny. The deep ocean floor was as empty as an underwater desert. Then up ahead, we saw a spot that was full of life. It looked like an undersea garden with all kinds of strange animals in it. This is hot water vent, class, said the frizz. A vent is an opening in the ocean floor. Flowing from the vent is super hot water mixed with hydrogen sulfide gas. Miss Frizzle said there were other vents on the ocean floor. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to visit them all, she added. Then she pulled up a lever on the dashboard and the bus zoomed towards the surface. Soon we were motoring over the open ocean toward a sun-drenched island. The bus had changed into a glass bottom boat. Through the glass, we saw what looked like a wall made of colorful rocks. Ms. Frizzle said it was a coral reef made of tiny animals called polyps. We dove overboard and began to explore. The reef was made of many different kinds of corals. Some looked like trees with branches. Others looked like fans or fingers. 
Some even look like human brains. A coral reef makes a good home for many ocean plants and animals, said the frizz. We saw crabs and lobsters, huge eels and octopuses, slimy sea slugs and spiny sea urchins, and the most colorful fish in the world. Too soon, Miss Frizzle said it was time to go. No one wanted to be left behind, so we all climbed aboard. Frizzy stepped on the gas, and the bus chugged away from the coral reef. Nearby, a school of dolphins leaped past. In the distance, we saw a whale. Everything seemed normal. Then we noticed that something weird was happening. The bus was getting flat. As usual, Ms. Frizzle was the only one who stayed calm. She drove us to an ocean current, and we were swept along in the fast-moving water for thousands of miles. After a while, we saw our beach again. Keep your ballots, class! Everyone stay on the bus, shouted the frizz. On the bus was right. It had turned into a giant surfboard. We had to stand on top of it, and we were riding a wild wave straight toward the shore. Hang ten, class! Oh no! It was a giant wipeout. The whole class went under. The next thing we knew, we were washing up on the sand. Our diving suits were gone, and the bus was its old self again. There it was, sitting in the parking lot as if nothing had happened. We thanked Lenny the lifeguard for everything and hit the road. Back in our classroom, we made a terrific chart of the ocean for the bulletin board. What ocean words do you recognize on their chart? I see the intertidal zone, the continental shelf, the continental slope, and the hot water vent. What else do you see? Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story, and I hope that you'll come into the library to check out these books. See you later. Can you wave goodbye, Liz? Bye, everyone.